Hey everybody, and welcome to my N5 series on the MPC, where I cover a topic in about five minutes. The sound technician writes in and says, could you do a vid on creating a sample pool? I simply just don't understand the MPC file system. I only ever just make an entire new piece and never go to a file of drums or loops or one shots. Uh, yeah, for sure. So the thing to consider is the sample pool. If I don't know if you're using the term correctly or not, but uh, in MPC jargon, the sample pool are the samples that you've traditionally loaded into memory that you have immediately available for you that you can do all of your editing, chopping, and other things. So you're probably, if you're if you are making samples, loading expansion packs or other things, you probably actually are loading them and not realizing that you are loading samples into your sample pool. That said, I do think you're also kind of hinting at some organizational questions, which I will get into and explain kind of how I organize things on my MPC on the internal SSD drive, but you can do it on the SD drive as well. So if we double tap menu, you can see we've got uh, the list. It usually starts in content. You can go to places. If we go to MPC SSD, and that's just what I named mine so that when I mount it onto the computer, I know what it is. Uh, I've got a few different folders like albums, expansions, which you, if you have expansion packs, you'll want to have that. Uh, a few other things here. If I go to samples, I've created the sample folder myself. That's usually where I just put everything so I know with a unique name off of the base or root of the file structure I can get at. So if I go into samples, you can see I've got computer music, future music. These are just folders where I've taken the sample libraries that I've downloaded for various um, computer music or future music magazines and just organize them based on the name of the, or the, the issue number of them. So I can kind of find things real quick that way. I also have like kits and a few other things, but I've got one folder called style. And the reason why I did this is as I go to like loop masters or I've gotten sample CDs or wherever I've gotten these things from, just so I have a sense for what the content is, I've tended to create all these different folders like ambient blues, breaks, uh, chill out, disco, down tempo, drum and bass, all these folders here. And uh, that way, if I'm like, hey, I want to make this kind of music, I can find at least some inspiration really quick or some things that I might want to start with and work with so that I know like what tempo I'm working in or what the groove might be or things like that. So given that... Um, like I got this breaks folder and off of loop masters, I got the, uh, they had a sale on the, a couple, I think four of the British music library, uh, sample sets. So I got a couple of these and basically this is just, uh, I renamed the sample sets to get rid of some of the information and keep it a little bit tighter, but I can go into any of these. And from here, I now know, I, I now know what it is. So it's a break. It's a, a set of breaks. I know um, where it came or where it came from it, or like who the manufacturer is. And then I know like what that sample library has been titled. And then I have all the subfolders here. So for example, I've got breaks, which are the break loops, fills, which are another set of loops that are just for fills. We got longer breaks to chop, which is what they named it. And then one shots. So like the things like just a single kit or a single snare or single hi hat. But if I go into breaks, I can come through and just hit the play. It's a little loud. Don't need to digitally clip, but we can see like this says the BML GD261 tape echo drum break. You know, maybe I want that, but you can just come in and just load a bunch of these. And when you do load, it's immediately putting it on whatever pad you have highlighted green. And if you do load to pool, you're just loading it into memory and not assigning it anywhere. So that's kind of how that will work. But yeah, definitely just like feel, you know, go nuts, like load whatever you want. And then when you're kind of done with that, you, you know, go find something else. Maybe I want some hip hop. Let's go. Yeah, we'll go to hip hop. We'll go to, I, I don't really care for the data Becker sound set, but it, it is fun having something that you don't like to work with sometimes just because you maybe can squeeze something out of it. But you know, we got bass loops. And in, in this case, these are named. They tell me what the BPM is of 70. And this is a D sharp minor is the scale it's in. So, you know, again, load to pool. I've got that in memory. 
Maybe I want F minor, load that to pool, and just go through and do the same thing for you know other sounds. So if you want to know how you get into the actual samples, you can just double tap mute and you'll come into the sample edit view. And if you double tap here, you can see what's in memory. So these are all the loops that I just loaded. And I can just use this interface now that I won't get into it, but, but if you haven't used it, let me know. I'm happy to try and like explain it a little bit more, but I can, you know, trigger it and listen to it and see what it is that I want to do with it from this view, whether it's chopping it up or other things. And as I said, I've now got all these loops loaded. If I, the, the way that the MPC is going to actually manage it itself is when I save it, because it's got anything in memory, it's just going to write it out into the file system. So how I manage my own uh, uh, projects, if I go to menu, we'll go click save. I'm gonna do uh, save project. I have created on my SSD and SD card folders, just called projects. And for like whatever I'm working on, I've got that that I can work on. And I usually have, like I put it by year and then I'll put in like a month and day and then just like a name. So I'll just do this here. We'll go, what is it? The first we'll go 10 dash one. Say do that. Actually, I probably should have given it an actual name, but I'm going to call this uh, test, uh, test for the sound technician. Whoops. TST, test for TST. So when I go hit save, what it's gonna do is it's taking all of those samples and writing those samples out. It's writing out all of the information about the song out there. So that it's not, it's keeping it together so that when I come back and load it again later, even if I go move around those sample packs or rename them or do other things, it has that actual content very tightly uh, copied into a single project folder to load it back in to make it easier. So, Anyway, the sound technician, thanks for the question. I hope that helps answer some of the things that you might have had for questions about the sample pool, how things work on the MPC, and kind of gives you a little bit of a, hopefully some confidence to go play around with it. But um, yeah, everybody, thanks for stopping by. Keep making music, keep having fun. Remember, if it sounds good, it is good. And peace.